Good morning, Pastor Jay here with your Friday devotion, and I'm in our church library, and behind me are two new additions on the wall, a couple of uh, framed pictures about as cute uh, as they get, and I want to invite you to come into the library. There's a lot here for you. There's reference books uh, to help you research a little further into biblical passages that you're reading. There's uh, works by popular uh, modern artists. There's some classics in here. And out on a little uh, display uh, beyond the door of the library, right at the entrance, are some books that we've been looking at in adult uh, Bible studies, uh, things that are current and might be of interest to you. So stop by the library here at Christ the King. But what I want to share with you today, we've been looking at, as you know, we've been looking at the Augsburg Confession. And I want to share with you the background. I thought you might find that interesting. So let me read this to you. This is the introduction. Under the date of January 21st, 1530, Emperor Charles V summoned an imperial diet to meet the following April in Augsburg, Germany. He desired a united front against his military operations against the Turks. And this seemed to demand that an end be made of religious disunity, which had been introduced at home as the result of the Reformation. Isn't that something? He wanted a united front against fighting Muslims. So it's interesting. According, accordingly, he invited the princes and representatives of free cities in the empire to discuss the religious differences at the forthcoming diet uh, in the hope of overcoming them and restoring unity. In keeping with this invitation, the elector of Saxony asked his theologians in Wittenberg to prepare an account of the beliefs and practices in the churches of his land. In other words, these new Lutheran churches. Since a statement of doctrines known as the Schwabach Articles had already been prepared in the summer of 1529, all that seemed to be needed now was an additional statement concerning the changes in practice which had been made in the churches of Saxony. Such a statement was therefore prepared by Wittenberg theologians, and since it was approved at the meeting of Torgau at the end of March 1530, it is commonly referred to as the Torgau Articles. Together with other documents, the Schwabach and Torgau Articles were taken to Augsburg, there it was decided to make a common Lutheran statement rather than merely a Saxon statement, in other words, for that area, of the account which was to be submitted to the emperor. Circumstances also demanded that it be made clear in the statement that Lutherans were not casually to be lumped together with all other opponents of Rome. And other considerations con suggested the desirability of emphasizing the agreements with Rome rather than the differences with Rome. You always have to keep that in mind. The Augsburg Confession was there to say, hey guys, we're like you. You've just strayed off the path a little bit. We're not going out into left field like a lot of the other uh, churches of the Reformation did. All these factors played a part in determining the character of the document, which is now prepared under the hand of Philip Melanchthon. You've heard that name before, the close associate of Luther. The Schwabach Articles became the principal basis for the first part, and the Torgau Articles became the principal basis for the second part of what came to be known as the Augsburg Confession. Luther, who was not present at Augsburg, was consulted through correspondence, but revisions and emendations were made at the very eve of the formal presentation to the emperor on June 25th, 1530. Now that's interesting, why wasn't Luther there? You might have thought, hey, at the Augsburg, the Diet of Augsburg, he said, here I stand, I can do no other, no. That was back at the Diet of Worms. And at that diet, well, it doesn't sound very tasty, does it? But back at the Diet of Worms, uh, he was declared a heretic. And he was actually in hiding uh, when the Augsburg Confession uh, was presented to the emperor. So that's a little bit of the history. What it shows me is when you, you're doing what's right, when you're following what you believe is the gospel, there's a threat to you. Um, if Luther had come to it, he probably would have been arrested and would have been put to death. And so he had to work through Philip Melanchthon and others to try to make peace. We have to remember as Lutherans, uh, Luther was not trying to break away. He was not trying to start a new church. He was trying to bring the church back together around the gospel, bring it back together around the good news. Um, and we're a reforming movement to this day. We're trying to bring unity. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for heroic individuals like Luther who took a stand and almost lost his life. We thank you also, Lord, that we are a church that seeks reconciliation, that we seek unity with our Christian brothers and sisters. Lord, bless this task even today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope that little bit of history was helpful, and I hope you have a good Friday and a great weekend.